Hey there, it's a busy day. Um, I want to talk about my friend Danny. When I got saved, my best friend named Danny, and he was um, from an Orthodox Jewish family. He was gay, and he was an alcoholic, and he was addicted to pain medicine. Uh, and everywhere he went, he had to perform. He just he would draw crowds. He was just completely always off the wall, hilarious. Everybody thought he was hilarious. He would make whole crowds of people laugh until they cried. Strangers, you know, it was just and to, that was how he could deal with who he was because his Jewish family rejected him because he was gay. Okay. And the gay community is extremely abusive and he was extremely tender hearted. Uh, plus the alcoholism was ruining him. Um, so when I got saved, I led him to the Lord too. And now he had another problem, which is he was a Christian. The Christians rejected him because he was gay. The gays rejected him because he was a Christian. The Jews rejected him because he was gay and a Christian. He could find no comfort for his conscience. He believed in Jesus. He believed Jesus died for his sins and rose from the dead, but that's about it. That's all he could grow to grasp because he could not overcome the, he, he had to drink a whole bottle of Seagram's every night before he went to bed. He couldn't sleep unless he drank an entire uh, bottle of Seagram's. And there were times that I just couldn't understand how he could be saved because I was really religious at the time. Um, well, eventually he died of a drug overdose. And I believe I'm going to see him again. Did he have a changed life or grow? Well, you know what? He went from believing Jesus, not believing Jesus, to believing Jesus. And I remember one time he told me, because I was so religious, he's like, David, I just want you to know that Jesus died for Archie Bunker. <laughs> and I said, what? He said, we want him to die for people like, uh, you know, that everybody likes and feels sorry for. But he died for the bigot wife beater in the trailer park who beats his wife and is addicted to meth and that was like hard for me to understand at the time you know believe it or not even though i was a big sinner i thought i'd cleaned up my life now did he have a changed life well he had a change he was regenerated in his inner man and he thirsted for fellowship and he wanted to talk about jesus but he couldn't overcome his sins because he was Condemned from every side, and the law is the strength of sin. You try to overcome alcoholism by going to talk to Christians who are condemning you because you're homosexual. Homosexual, you know. He he wasn't practicing anymore, but it didn't matter because at that time, you know, Christians were not clear that you could even be like that and be saved. I mean, most of the people that were he was going to didn't even believe the gospel. They, the, the whole community is, is filled with wolves and the teachers and the preachers are beating the sheep. There's no food and sinners are malnourished. And you want to go on about how, well, if you have a change, if you're really saved, you're going to have a changed life and you affect this demeanor like you are so righteous and so holy and you want to judge everybody. Ah. <sighs> No, Jesus died to save sinners, the ungodly who works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted to him as righteousness. My dad, I found out, I didn't know he was saved because he was kind of a foul mouth. Um, he had MS and he drank himself to death. And I remember about six months before he died, my wife and I tried to tell him, hey, you've got to stop. He's smoking, chain smoking and drinking bourbon every night. And he's like, I said, you are going to kill yourself. And, he's, and he looked at me with tears in his eyes. He says, I watched my, uh, I watched my in-law deteriorate from MS and I'm not going to go through that. I'm not going through that. Now he, uh, so he drank himself to death to avoid that kind of death. MS is terrifying for, you know, I don't want to get into it, but, um, my uh, dad became like 
I didn't know my dad because I was alienated from him. And then my wife helped me reconcile to him. So I was just kind of knowing him from the outside and getting to know him. And when he died, three or 400 people showed up at his funeral. He had gone from being a big corporate exec lawyer to being a small town lawyer that worked for free. I mean, people couldn't afford to pay him. And so he they would pay him a TV or chickens. And he, I mean, he made like, I did his estate. He only made like 40000 a year as a lawyer. But he was really good. And he served his community. And three or 400 people showed up at this funeral. I had no idea who this guy was. Every single one of them, they talked for hours giving testimonies about what a hero he was and how they changed his life and how they helped him and how uh, how they loved him and how he was serving. And he had MS, but he didn't let people know. They didn't know he had MS. He walked with a cane, but he didn't tell me he had MS. He was out there in, uh, he would work the festivals in this small town wearing like a, a big costume that was super hot. He shouldn't have been doing that, you know. He gave himself to that community, and I never knew he was saved because he was kind of a foul mouth and he drank and stuff. And at the funeral, there was a guy who came up to me. He had a shepherd's staff, and he had a voice box. And he had gotten saved after the mob put him in a trash compactor and killed, almost killed him. <laughs> and he became a preacher of Jesus. And he was a weirdo. You know, even at the funeral, I thought he was a weirdo. He came up to me with the shepherd's staff and with his voice box and I was like oh my gosh you know and he told me I just want you to know your dad helped me so many times and I want you to know that I prayed with him a lot of times he got saved and I'm like he never told me you know and uh his girlfriend said he had a real you know quiet faith and the reason was because he had trained to be a priest before he became a lawyer he trained to be a priest okay and uh, when he was in the priesthood, he, uh, training, seminary, he saw priests molesting boys, and it totally disillusioned him. And when I got saved, he didn't know what to think about it. He didn't know if God was aliens or what, and he made fun of me, you know? And so I just never brought it up again, you know? Well, a few years ago, I had a dream that my dad came to me um, on a hill, and he was dressed in white, and his skin was like bronze. When I did his estate, I had to go through his law office. His computer was filled with porn. I don't think he knew how to overcome anything. He didn't have any fellowship except that guy that prayed for him, and he kept his faith to himself. Yes, I believe he was saved. Uh, did he have a changed life? Well, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you are regenerated in your spirit, and the life of God comes to dwell in you. You have received the eternal life, and you will be glorified. Period. Whether you're the thief of the cross that says, remember in your kingdom, uh, or any, you know, anybody who believes and calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, regardless of their condition. And then when I found out who my biological parents were, I found out my mom was schizophrenic and had five husbands, and she became saved and served the Lord, but she had to stay on her meds. Because she would either be crazy or serving the Lord. And when she was serving the Lord, she was preaching the gospel to people and winning people to the Lord. But when she was not right, things got real weird. And there was a whole church of people that took care of her and uh, for the last 10 years of her life. And then my dad, my biological dad, uh, he was in and out of uh, homeless institutions because he was an alcoholic because... Believe it or not, my biological dad was born in 1917, and he came back from World War II, all a mess, PTSD. And he became an alcoholic, and he went to prison because he stole a car, and then he got it, he escaped and stole another car and was back in prison. It was all over the news. Um, and he had, he kept going into homeless institutions, and he was a really good-looking guy. And every time he went into the homeless institutions, he'd come out with a new girlfriend. And he, you know, my, my mom was his third wife. She, he was her fifth husband. <laughs> uh, anyway, I found out about all this a few years ago, and it just totally made me finally relax and just say, you know what? Salvation is by grace. Because my mom led my dad to the Lord, my bio dad. And he never thought he was good enough. You know, he, he, I, I know my sister, who, believe it or not, is 74. Uh, and she told me, you know, the last few years of his life, he believed in Jesus. He knew he was going to heaven, but he just had so much condemnation because his whole life was so broken. And there's only religious teaching. You know, the only churches out by them are these little Baptist churches. It is religion's fault 
that people don't have the fruit in their life that everybody's looking to see. It is not the fault of the beaten sheep, you jerk. Again, my video, my featured video is called The Beaten Sheep Need a Good Samaritan, You Jerk. And I really do believe that any person who is sanctimoniously preaching a changed life as an evidence of salvation is a jerk. You need to repent. It's false. Yes, a changed life can follow, but it, de it depends on nourishment, food, and grace, not fear and condemnation and law. And if you are under law and fear and condemnation and the gospel does not permeate the teaching you're under, you are going to be malnourished and you are going to be starving and you're going to be robbed and you're going to be despoiled of your crown. And you know what? You're saved if you believe that Jesus is the son of God. Period. Regardless of your condition. You know, uh, when I first got saved, there was a guy who got in our group who um, eventually committed suicide and he made, he planned it like for six months and left a really long suicide letter. And basically it was, he didn't feel like he could live up to the standard of the Bible of the apostles. He was under works in his mentality from the teaching and he committed suicide because of it. Cause he felt like his whole life was a waste. It was devastating. And at the time I didn't think a Christian could do that. So when we went to the funeral, the guy who did the sermon said, I just want you to know that there's two kinds of people. There's people who are on the ark and people who are not on the ark at the time of the flood. Doesn't matter if Noah is a drunk, he's on the ark. That is the, the evidence of salvation is that you're on the ark. What does it mean to be on the ark? You believe the gospel period. End of story. So I hope that the people who believe this changed life message manifest what they are more quickly because they're hiding among us, pretending to be grace while judging everybody. And they need to either repent or manifest what they really hard, what they really are in their sanctimonious hatred for the brethren so we can be clear to mark and avoid them so that we can uh, finally uh, be done with all this ambiguity and confusion. Let the tares be bundled up and manifested together. And I have, I always thought that the tares would be bundled up out there somewhere. Nope. Remember a lot. The whole town of Sodom was outside his door, you know, and I think they're going to be all gathered up against us. And then they're going to be blaspheming us on the way up to heaven. <laughs> People think, Oh, we'll know when the, everybody will know when the rapture happened. I don't know. I think the Lord could just snatch his sheep out and, and the people left could just be in a crowd of offended tares gnashing their teeth at them and doing videos about them and slandering them and accusing them of this and that and blaspheming them up in heaven. Remember, it says the Antichrist blasphemes the saints in heaven. Uh, they blasphemed Jesus. They said he had an unclean spirit. They said John didn't eat or drink, but they said he had a demon. Jesus came eating and drinking. They said he's a glutton and a wine bibber and a friend of sinners. Um, you do not understand the grace message if you don't understand that Christ died to save sinners and that it's possible to be a sinner and saved. Period. Um... Is there anything else that needs to be said about that? Probably volumes, you know, but, uh, yeah, I think that, I think that things are just being manifested before we go home for what they really are. <sighs> Let no one steal your crown, period. That's how to be watchful for the rapture. The Lord told me at the beginning of the year, they're going to blaspheme you on the way up. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later.